Today we are taking a look at Classic Soy, if that's how it's pronounced, which is a unique widget centered Android launcher. As a bonus, it's also free and open source. After you first get into the launcher and set up your permissions, you'll see something like this, though with your device's wallpaper. You can swipe up to see your other widgets and swipe down to see the search and app menu. This is how the launcher is generally laid out and its general workflow. The main screen has these widgets, and then the app menu, which you can access by swapping down, has your apps. By default, the launcher includes widgets for weather, media, and calendar that are enabled by default. There are some others that can be enabled manually as well. The app menu opens the keyboard for the global search by default, and the launcher has the most used and recently used apps in a favorite section, where you can also pin apps manually. And this makes opening commonly used apps very fast and more efficient than it would be from the normal app menu. This can be added to home screen as well, and it supports work profiles in the main app menu, which are presented in a separate tab. And to me, this is a crucial feature. However, the defaults do have their quirks. For example, the media player doesn't support work profiles, despite the app menu doing so, and even the favorites section supporting them. And also, I don't really like keyboard opening by default. Additionally, the screen rotation is enabled by default, which is very unusual and not to my preference either. The open space between the screen uh, is also unnecessary, in my opinion. Also, when adding widgets from applications, the launcher defaults to point them in of border, which is a tendency to look really ugly. But this can be changed by configuring the widget. Even so, if the shape of the widget is not really suitable for the current appearance settings that you have, it will add some background to corners, and this is also pretty ugly, but it can also be disabled. Fortunately, the launcher has squared configuration options. First of all, you can disable the screen rotation and the keyboard opening by default, as well as configure the clock widget to stop taking up the entire screen with empty space. You can customize the general theme, but you can also customize how the widget cards look, the search bar style, the icon size and style, the stage and navigation bar icon styles, in terms of dark and light theming, search items, gestures, etc. I won't go through every option, but the point is that there are a lot of options to make the launcher fit your style and preferences. Though it is worth mentioning that you can also configure what the global search can search. However, there are a few options that are not present, which would be useful to me if they were. Firstly, although you can configure how the search bar behaves when scrolling down to widgets, it will always appear when scrolling up and this cannot be changed. I would also prefer to remove the search bar altogether, but this is not an option. Additionally, I would like to have a swipe gesture to switch between the work and personal profiles in the app menu, but this, again, is not possible. Perhaps one of the weirdest quirks of this launcher is that it doesn't really provide an easy like default launcher setting. Most launchers will either prompt to be a default immediately when you launch them, or have a button on the front page of the launcher settings, but this one just kinda doesn't. You either need to set in your phone settings or you search in the launcher, in which case shortcut search will just prompt you to give it the default because it needs it. In any case, the configurability is still very good and here's what I have set up on my main phone. As you can see, I have customized the clock widget, removed the empty space, changed the card corner size, removed the media widget, added a notes widget, and add the KDE Connect command widget. I have also opted to hide the status bar and configure the favorite section size to be two rows instead of one. This results in a user experience that feels very natural to me. I can immediately see the weather and any notes that I want to have. Adding new notes is not perfect, but it can be done. My apps are just a swipe away, and my favorite app section allows me to quickly launch apps most of the time, regardless of whether they are work or personal profile apps. The launcher is also really solid when it comes to general polish and animations. Whether it's the home screen moving out of the way when opening that menu, or the bounce effect when returning from it. This is all backed up by haptics, which make the actions feel yet more impactful. Additionally, I really appreciate small touches, like the moving rain animation in the weather widget. In conclusion, Kvasitso is a launcher with a good workflow, solid configurability, great attention to detail, and some strange and flawed defaults, as well as minor flaws that can't be changed. The launcher is also free to use, and has two versions. One with proprietary dependencies that are used in some features, like the weather, and one without them, which lacks some of the features. 
The one without proprietary dependencies is on the F third repositories. Uh, meanwhile, the one with them can be obtained by adding a third party repository.